Hey guys, Dustin Dolby here. If you haven't joined Workflow's Facebook group yet, their link is in the pinned description. It's an absolute party, get in there. Today I'm gonna run you through a workflow how to photograph white wine and delicious, delicious stuff because it's so susceptible to glowing. And I think this ended up looking really juicy. What do you guys think? And you know, that is the beauty of white wine. It's susceptible to glowing. Can you folks hear some crazy construction going on outside? Sorry about that. But let's check out that wine one more time in HD. So I really like the way this looks and we'll talk about the parameters to make the bottle glow like this and we'll explore uh, sort of start to end my whole shooting workflow for approaching this kind of stuff. So you can shoot this with expensive lights. I'm using speed lights and kit lens, really basic stuff. It really comes down to the modification and now I'm using a YN560 Mark IV with a Bowens mount adapter going into that strip box. So that gives me some really manageable light. And when we're dealing with a transparent object, we can light it from the back. So that's what we'll do. Now this isn't how I would actually probably light a wine bottle, but it's a good point of discussion why we wouldn't. Uh, you see we get a direct refraction through that water. I don't know, it just looks really flat. Like we're seeing the light directly behind and it's pretty uniform. There's no fall off, no softness. So we wanna show off the sweet, sweet shape of that wine bottle. So let's bring in the diffusion material. And this will soften things up a bit. Now this is a thin nylon one, but we'll still wanna increase the power of our backlight. Up to one half, I'll try. And we're going for a symmetrical, symmetrical look. I just eyeballed this, so we can discuss. Okay, it's a little off, but you see, compared to that, the light falls off much more severely. And now we've softened things up. And then we zoom in, we see these lines. You can get rid of them in posts, or you can double up your diffusion material. As I said, nylon's sort of thin, so that's what causes that. But we're seeing the light fall off to the side. The classical look of having it do that symmetrically is always fun. We're gonna go with more of a side directional look today. And we're still at one half power and I'll line that up. And this is gonna free up some real estate on the front of the bottle for some really beautiful uh, specular highlights in a moment. So we see a nice right to left gradient. Again, clean up those lines and we're good to go or double up your diffusion material. Um, I'll just build this up quickly. Uh, and you know, we can kind of criticize it and break it all down, putting out fires at the end, how about that? So I'll bring in a second strip light and another speed light actually. And you could use the same strip box twice and comp stuff together, but it's always nice to see it happen in camera when you can, uh, especially because we're not working with modeling lights. So we got to see that classic look kind of jump out at us right away. And this looks like something you just kind of see in a typical winery uh, catalog shot. And you know, having that area there, that black area to put the highlight really paid off. Because if we use the symmetrical frame, and then try to place highlights around it, I don't think it would look very well. It may clash. Let's bring this over to the other side and see if we can just run that test live for you to show you the value of, you know, leaving yourself shadow space. Yeah, like that certainly clashes. The wine actually looks really swampy or something like that. And it's just because of all that clashing. It's not flattering. But when we've seen this frame, you know, it really clicked. So, you know, we'll bring that back over. And you know, we can micro adjust this for days, that's for sure, because the strip box is so close to the wine, little adjustments will make a big difference. One thing to look out for is the left part of this wine bottle is reflecting the diffusion material. It almost looks like the bottle's crooked, but it's not. It's barely there, it's, ref it's reflecting the diffusion material. We'll solve that in a moment, no doubt. Um, why don't we start off with a simple reflection, just to see what the labels are looking like. And are we a little bright here, or are we good? It may be like a third of a stop too bright, but that's definitely some nice label detail, specifically some nice cap detail. And I'm very excited about that. Now, while I enjoy the label detail coming out here, and we can blend it in with the original exposure and find happy medium, um, I don't like what happened here at the side of the bottle. So I'll probably end up copying this layer with this layer. And, you know, I'm really comfortable in Photoshop, so I resort to comping quite often. If you're more obsessive with getting things right in camera, you could put your reflector to a height such that you're only reflecting light into the label and not getting a specular highlight. And I must've went a little too high there, but you get what I mean. Uh, people certainly take that approach when they wanna get it right in camera. But I am pretty comfortable in Photoshop, so I'll just bring the label into our final shot. Now to retain the edge information we were talking about earlier, I will use a simple uh, black flag method. 
because I think we'll see a nice improvement. And you can always use a light stand to get that in real close, but it almost looked like the wine moved and it actually maybe did shake a little bit, but it's really the edge revealing itself to you. And we crisp up the cap as well. Uh, so definitely at the end, we have a bit of a checklist in our head now. We're gonna grab a reflection frame as our final shot, a base frame. We'll bring in this to the left and to the right, and we'll get all those exposures together. And then we can ensure going into post-production, you know we have a lot of strong stuff to work with. Do we need a gradient? That's the question. No, I have a feeling we don't need a gradient. You don't always. It does show off the shape of glass, uh, which is nice. Like, it's a nice thing to do. But I don't think it's always out of apathy that people are using these straight line looks. Uh, you know, it does look interesting, but let's see what we can do with the gradient. It'll probably be a bit forward. And, you know, we are fairly cramped here. I'd usually set up adequate space to have a diffuser if you're going to be using a gradient. This will probably look decent, though. Just to get an idea. And that's probably a hair bright, but it's pretty interesting what you can do with simple, you know, modifications to your speed lights. I mean, that's a fairly large size diffuse, or uh, gradient, not diffuser. But it really comes down to the fact that our stuff is so close to our product. And that comes down to the shooting table we're using. It's pretty small. Uh, the reason this one's actually transparent is because I want to backlight this. If you've seen my recent red wine flex last episode, and that's going to give me a perfect selection to bring into Photoshop. And, you know, I always love doing that and having to do all the selection work for me. So a small shooting table really lets you get in close. So check out the final look and quick zoom in. You know, it's pretty simple just putting this stuff together. It's just a few minutes in post-production. And once you run through all the frames you need to get, you're really ensuring yourself you have the information to uh, knock this one out of the park. While I have everything running, I will just quickly show you the backlit frame I would get. So I would just turn my primary lights off. And you may want to use the black cards for this because it'll help you retain, you know, that edge detail. But let's just fire it at 1 over 4 power with the backlight. And something like that's probably too dark, so I'll actually move this strip box outside it's symmetrical. And, you know, without touching the camera because I don't want to shake anything, I'll just turn the power up directly on the flash. And now hopefully I can get a high contrast backlit frame. Something like that, and that'll select it out in Photoshop for me. And sometimes I'll go even further and I'll do a black card to each side. I'll get that one a bit closer. And you know, I would take the time to tweak the heck out of this, make sure they're perfect. But that frame can easily just blend with that one. And now you have something to totally boomify and you're gonna be cutting that wine out. And then you can put that on whatever you want. It's gonna look the best on white or light gray because that's the color you kinda of actually shot it on. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll catch you next time on Workflow. Make sure to thumb up the video. It's a great way to help the channel and leave comments for future episodes. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.